This is Common Core State Standard Support video for mathematics. This is standard 6NS7D. This standard states, understand ordering and absolute value of rational numbers. Distinguish comparisons of absolute value from statements about order. Let's look at the introductory statement for this standard. Understand ordering and absolute value of rational numbers. Now the idea of ordering of numbers is covered in earlier standards. For example, fractions, ordering them is addressed back in the fourth grade in standard 4NF.2. So this is where students learn how to distinguish between, say, which is larger, three-fourths or two-thirds. Going on to some other types of rational numbers, ordering decimals is covered in grades four and five. In grade four, it's in standard 4NF7. And in grade five, it's in standard 5NBT3B where again students learn to order decimals such as 7.6 compared to 7.34. And then here in grade 6, the notion of integers is introduced. So students learn in previous standards in this grade to order integers in standard 6NS6C and standard 6NS7A, where again they learn to distinguish, for example, that uh, negative 12 will be less than negative 4. Let's look at the idea of absolute value. This actually occurs right before this standard in standard 6 NS7C. And it states, understand the absolute value of a rational number as its distance from zero on the number line. Interpret absolute value as magnitude for a positive or negative quantity in a real world situation. So basically what this is saying is that absolute value simply refers to the distance from zero regardless of the direction and there are real-world contexts for this. So here we have two numbers, negative 4 and 4 are both the same distance from 0, <laughs> but we have a little bit of a problem because obviously this is not a true statement. Negative 4 is not equal to positive 4. So mathematically we need some type of symbolism, something to adjust this, and the symbol for absolute value would be two bars, something like this, that again indicates that we're talking about the distance of uh, 4. So then that would actually make this a true statement because we are talking only about the distance from 0. And both of these numbers are 4 away from 0, just in different directions. Let's look at a real life context. Let's say uh, I'm at home and I drive 8 miles to work. So let's let home be 0. So if we're talking about location, I'm starting at 0. I'm starting at home. And then I'm going to drive eight miles to work, but then I'm going to drive eight miles in the opposite direction and go back home. So I'm back where I'm, I started. I'm back at zero. I'm back home. Now that's a little bit different situation as opposed to distance traveled. This would be like, uh, okay, the odometer on my car. Well, if I drive eight miles to work and then eight miles back, my odometer isn't going to register that I didn't travel. You know, there's no more distance, on, uh, no more mileage on my car. Uh, it'd be nice if that was the case, but it isn't. So what happens here is that, okay, I start at home, I go eight miles to work, but then when I go back home, I'm, st I'm still traveling eight miles, even though it's in the different direction. So here I have to indicate that I want just the actual distance traveled. And so my odometer is going to say that I traveled 16 miles, not zero miles. Okay, now let's look at the specific standard here, D. Distinguish comparisons of absolute value from statements about order. Now when we're dealing with positive rational numbers, there really isn't any confusion between the two ideas, absolute value versus order, because there will be one and the same. So for example, let's say we're talking about a distance of five. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So, uh, you know, a distance of five and, and five being compared to say zero, uh, there's no confusion. Where it does get a little bit confusing for students would be when we're talking about absolute value and order for negative rational numbers. And the best way to really get a handle on what this is saying is to just look at a few real life contexts. 
Okay, in a real life context, debt implies negative numbers. So let's say on one credit card I owe $400 and on another credit card I owe $1,000. Now mathematically, negative 1,000 is less than negative 400. But here's where it gets a little bit sticky. Uh, a real life statement might be something like a debt of $1,000 is greater than a debt of $400. Now here's where again there might be a little bit of confusion because we're saying greater than even though back here the comparison between those two numbers is less than that again negative 1000 is less than negative 400 but what you're really dealing with here in this statement is absolute value because we're talking about the distance from zero you know a debt of one thousand dollars is going to put me further away from zero than a debt of four hundred dollars is so again uh, students need to be aware of the distinction here that again uh, negative one thousand isn't greater than negative four hundred but the distance from zero is let's take a horizontal number line and let's make it vertical and apply a temperature context. Now colder implies a lower temperature. So for example here negative 40 degrees is less than negative 20 degrees. But a real life statement might be that 40 below zero is more cold than 20 below zero. Again the, the confusion with this idea of more cold even though negative 40 is less than negative 20. But again what we're dealing with here is absolute value. We're talking about the distance from zero where if the temperature is minus 40 degrees I am in fact further away from zero than I would be at negative 20 degrees. Let's take one more context. Uh, again a vertical number line application where we're talking about depth. Now depth implies the distance from the surface of the water in some context. So in this scenario uh, a depth of negative, uh, well, negative 4,000 is less than negative 2,000. But then when we talk about this in a real life kind of way, we say that 4,000 feet below sea level is a greater depth than 2,000 feet below sea level. Again, this idea of greater. But again, we are dealing with absolute value, even though absolute value is never actually stated you know, in the sentence. But again, what this is really saying is that negative, a depth of 4,000 is further away from zero from the surface than a depth of 2,000. So again, these are just a few examples of the care that needs to be taken uh, when you're dealing with comparisons from an absolute value perspective versus talking about comparing the two numbers numerically. Again, just be more careful with negative rational numbers because that is where it might get a little bit confusing. Students understand that in one case you're dealing with absolute value, in the other case you're making a comparison between the two numbers.